The National Human Rights Commission, NHRC, says it will set up an independent investigation panel to probe human rights violations by operatives of the Special anti robbery Squad and other segments of the Nigerian police within the next one week. The decision was taken on October 12, 2020 at a multi-stakeholders forum in Abuja, organized by the Executive Secretary of the NHRC, Tony Ujuku, and the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamo, as a follow-up to the recent disbandment of SARS by the IGP. There was also an agreement by the forum that the Inspector General of Police should order all state police commands to halt the use of force against protesters and to release arrested protesters and citizens unconditionally. Two security experts, Chigo Zirim Okoro and Dixon Osaje, now joins us to discuss this. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, yes, yeah, starting with you, Dick Dixon, since the protest commenced, it seems the police has acceded to, uh, to the demands of Nigerian youth. Has this been the right decision for the government to make? Hello. Okay, I, I, I think, uh, first of all, I will give you uh, an applause for our youth. Uh, this is a new, uh, a, a new turnaround for a uh, We actually... Uh, uh, went out to the streets, the youth, uh, demanding for the end of that. And, uh, the Nigerian government used that voice of this, uh, coming. But, however, that is not the end of the, of the, of the race. Uh, because about this evening, the Supreme Police has been a new thing. So, what we needed from the Nigerian police now is not about giving us a new thing, because the staff is, is like a container. The content of the container are the main. So that is where we are pointing about the character and operational methodology of this new thing called SWAT. Because these same guys that activated all of us to work with staff on this place, exhibiting a state of unprofessional conduct, they are still going to be integrated or then will be integrated in this SWAT. So the problem here is character and training. So for me, what I'm going to suggest to uh, police is for them to carry out an effective training, carry out what we call predictive profiling. Predictive profiling is all about getting to know any officer or any officer that will exhibit a state of professional conduct. You need to also profile every one of them that will be coming on board. And training, training, training is very, very essential. All right, Dixon. Uh, how about you, Chigo Zirim? What do you think about the decision of the presidential panel? Yeah, good evening, uh, listeners. I, I think um, it's a step in the right direction um, because it is tries to address fundamental issues um, in the context of policy in Nigeria and also security sector broadly. Um, for all we care, uh, policy is all about the people. And so when you are policing a people that are not comfortable with your strategy, uh, that calls for a sober reflection and it calls for a, you know, the strategy, you know, um, rethinking your strategy and, you know, getting a new one that suits emerging concerns. Um, over the years, it's been the citizens and SARS. I'm happy with the steps taken so far. However, going forward, um, we are interested in comprehensive second sector reform. Um, it's not business as usual. Uh, fundamentally, there is need for uh, us to revisit um, several recommendations made in the past. That we have had several panels set up to, re to uh, re um, reform the Nigeria Police Force and Clean Foundation specifically uh, spearheaded several of such panels. Uh, we've had panels, uh, the recent one was panel that was uh, uh, on, on SAS, uh, that was coordinated by National Human Rights Commission and Clean Foundation. We've also had the presidential, uh, uh, the civil society panels on police reform in Nigeria. And so I think all these previous panels with several recommendations that are in archives, there is need for us to revisit them. Uh, more like trying to implement some of those innovations 
uh, that uh, will also help address the concerns of Nigerians. All right, Shikazira. Uh, beyond that, Okay. Um, just just quickly, that. because of time, I uh, just want to uh, move this on uh, very quickly. We see that SARS has been scrapped, yet the protests continue across the country. What other underlying issues do you think the protesters are demanding at this time? Um, I think uh, in response to that, uh, there is need for the leadership of the Nigeria Police Force uh, to work closely with strategic partners to engage uh, general public. And so in this case, the IGT will be the chief host or guest, and then Nigerians will interrogate him. So those concerns in more like a citizen town hall meeting, you know, where those concerns will be really unbundled, and then people will be allowed to express themselves. Um, so at the end of the day, I think it will be clearer as to what those additional concerns are, you know, so that we we'll take care of this problem once and for all. Um, for us, you, you can't just, we can't continue this way. You know, it's been, in fact, the total country is just shut down because of this. And also to thinking outside the box a bit, uh, I think it's not all about SARS alone. There are other Nigerians are just expressing hopelessness. And so um, that is what you see, uh, you know, at play, you know. So um, SARS now more, more like, I don't know how to express that, but, you know, uh, uh, it's one of the major concerns. But there are other issues that Nigerians are tired of. Okay, okay? so Let's... beyond certain sector broad issues, we should also think about all the address all the issues, burning issues in this country that the citizens are not comfortable with. I think from SARS, we move to another one from there, you know, like that, you know. So at the end of the day, let it be clear to um, our the elected uh, officials that the real power actually Chikazari. belongs to the people. Apologies to interject at this time. We are running out of time, and I'd like to bring uh, Dixon back into the conversation. Uh, Dixon, if you're still with us, some say SARS is not only a failure of the Nigerian police force, but also a failure of other arms of governments that should have, you know, supervised the operations, and that those organizations, uh, you know, and government arms should also be blamed. Do you do you think so? Yes, I, I agree. Uh, uh, I agree. Uh, I also uh, appreciate the last speaker. Yeah, she has made a lot of. Uh, relevant points, uh, which is essential because uh, the uh, state of Nigeria now we understand with all uh, stars and figures that power belongs to the people. Now let's take a look at what went wrong with SARS before its uh, disbandment. One of the, uh, one, one of the uh, erroneous acts of uh, SARS was command negligence. Uh, command negligence in the sense that uh, the uh, police is decentralized and order is coming from Abuja. Uh, they start to take their instructions from their head in Abuja, and uh, there was no proper monitoring of the policing system. So, combat negligence is one of the things. Yeah? Then, one of the second things, lack of uh, effective reward and punishment system. You know, these guys exhibit uh, unprofessional conduct without being punished and they get caught free. Then, also a long time departure from their SOP. I think uh, if any team is like the decent to checkmate crime or crime in progress, the standard operating procedure is supposed to guide them in their death operation. So they took a departure from the SOP. Then another problem with SARS is lack of fire discipline. Fire discipline in the sense that at any given time, a policeman wants to keep his gun. Now, let me tell you guys for free. The use of force is the last resource in any given situation. Before you apply force, you must have exhausted every mechanism in place for you to manage such violent situation. The year in our crime, the use of force is the first stop, which is erroneous. Then that is lack of discipline. Then lack of management of disruptive training. Because you know in America sometimes you I saw a lady a policeman and the policeman was telling her thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, until she had the police station. But yeah, in Nigeria you cannot speak to our police. You cannot speak to our soldiers. Okay, conversation with them. Thank you so much for your thoughts, uh, Dixon and Chigozirim here for us. Thank you for having me.